In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 things that I do to every single image inside of Adobe Lightroom that you can try right now to get some really cool and interesting results. Hey guys, my name is Tommy Reynolds. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the, my images that I've taken recently in Ethiopia and show you 10 things that I do with each and every single image to get the best result. But before I do, if there's anything I haven't mentioned in today's tutorial, then just drop your hints or tricks in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys do in Lightroom. And if you haven't seen it yet, then just click the card up there in the corner to watch my entire travel video from Ethiopia. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. The first thing that I do with every single image is I always play with the shadows and the highlights options. So I'm using here a, an Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and it's surprising actually how much detail you can pull if you are shooting in RAW. So make sure you are shooting in the RAW format. Uh, but one thing I always like to do is I like to pull the shadows up and straight away, that looks so much better. You're seeing so much more detail in the ground here and I always tend to pull the highlights down as well. And if I just make this a lot warmer, which I tend to do on a lot of the images here in Ethiopia, and then to counteract that, I've moved the tint down towards green and that's looking pretty good already. If I bring the exposure down a little bit more, that's already looking so much better that I might even just bring the tint down a little bit more and then maybe add some clarity here just to pull out some of that detail, but not too much. You don't wanna go over the top with the clarity slider. So that would be my first tip. Always mess around and play with the highlights and the shadows. As you can see, I've stretched the shadows and I've stretched the highlight. So that gives it a bit more of a painterly quality to it because obviously in paint, you have no limitations on dynamic range. So this makes it feel a lot more dynamic because you're seeing so much detail. So that would be tip number one, is always mess around and play with the shadows and the highlights. All right, so tip number two is syncing. So this is a great thing if you're also a wedding photographer and you wanna batch process hundreds of images so that they have the same color effect. So for example, let's jump straight into Lightroom again. So here I've made a quick edit here. You can see I've pulled down my highlights, shadows, I've done all um, my little tweaks and adjustments here. Now let's just say that I wanna sync this same color effect to all of these images here. Now if I then hold shift on my keyboard and then select that guy, so that's now selected these series of images. Now I go up to here to sync and that's now basically going to now paste my color effect to all of these images here. So I've got to sync and they have now all changed. But the only problem is, and here's where you, uh, you might really like this tool, is yes, it has all the same color effect, but it also copied over my exposure. However, in these series of images, I kept changing my exposure. So some are at f8, some are at f14, some changing the shutter speed. So what you would do is select your first one again, select all these again, and then go up to settings, then match total exposure. Click that. And that is now going to change all of the exposures on the images. Not only have I got a match on the colors, I now have a match on the exposure, which is so great, again, if, you keep, if, you've, if you've kept changing your settings during this, this run. So maybe you were doing some test shots, but it was actually a good shot. This, again, is just gonna speed up your process. So not only are you syncing, but you're also matching your total exposure. Really quick and easy tool. So tip number three is a really easy one. I use it all the time and that's the before key. So you press this key and it will show you what your image looked like before you made any adjustments at all. And it's actually the backslash key on your keyboard. So all you need to do is just hold down the backslash key and you can see what my image looked like before I started editing. So you can just see how far you've come um, and looking at this image, yeah, it looks really, really great. You, you can really appreciate the editing that's gone into it. And it's been fairly minimal, to be fair. It's just been playing with the highlight shadows, clarity, and messing with the temperature and tint up here. Always play with the tint. I always tend to lean towards the green side to kind of make it more earthy tones. All right, so tip number four is the white balance select tool. And this is a great tool if you wanna get a better idea what the correct white balance should be. So the way it works is rather than trying to guess what the perfect white balance should be for this image, you can go up here, select this guy. Now you are meant to select something that's either, you know, 18% um, gray or white in the image. Now I didn't have any card or anything kind of fancy like that, 
but he is wearing a grey or white shirt in this shot. Now sure, it might be a bit dirty, it might not be true white, it might not be pure, pure grey, but if I select that, that gets me to be fair pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. So I will often do this. I, I don't have the luxury of um, carrying a grey card with me everywhere, and especially when I'm traveling. So if I need a ballpark to get me in the zone, to get me pretty close, then I'll find something grey or white already in the photograph so that I can use this. And if again, I toggle using the last uh, shortcut that we did, the backslash, we can see that in my before shot, we can see that I had some magenta in there. So we can see toggling that back and forth. If we zoom in, so you can see the skin tones there are a lot more red before, but they look a lot more natural in my eyes anyway, um, using that white balance selector. So that's a great quick tip for you as well. All right, so tip number six is the gradient tool. So if you never use this, it's this guy up here. It's great if you want to darken the skies down a little bit because obviously the ground is a lot darker than the sky. So sometimes it can be hard to kind of uh, equal out that dynamic range. So using the gradient tool, for example, I can stretch this right down, holding my left mouse button down. These are the controls purely for the gradient tool. So if I bring down the exposure, for example, and then what I can do is then bring this guy down. It's almost like having a polarizing filter without obviously a polarizing filter. <laughs> and I can go down even further if I wanted to, to really darken the sky so you can really bring out all the colors. Um, so this is a great tool, but the only problem now is this uh, section here is quite dark, including this guy up here. I don't really want that to get dark as well. So what we can do to, uh, to bring that back is if we go to the brush, then scroll down to the arrays, and now I've got a brush on here. Now if you wanna increase or decrease the size, you can go down to the size of the feather here, then you can just increase the size like that, or if you've got a MacBook Pro, use the two fingers and up and down on your trackpad to change the size of, of the feather. So with the erase tool highlighted, I then just paint over that section there so that I can recover that back as well. So if you never used it already, then try using the gradient tool or the adjustment brush, but also use the erase tools with them so that you can select exactly what you want. All right, so the next tip is the straighten tool. So if you wanna get your horizon lines perfectly straight, you don't have to do this and just try and make sure it get it right and then just tweaking it like that. You don't need to do that anymore. What you need to do is you go to the angle tool here, select that, then go to the horizon line, then just draw a line across here, around there, and then let go, and then that will straighten it up. I can now then, uh, holding the shift on my keyboard, crop that way down, and then get really tight in, and then put my rule the thirds line on that horizon line, double click, and I know that that is perfectly straight. And going over to my previous image, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy, and then go back, and then go Command V to paste, and then I have my image, hit F on your keyboard to go full screen so that you can get a nice good look at your final image completely straight and cropped in. All right, so my next tip is sharpening. And within the sharpen tool in Lightroom, I use a thing called masking. And what that does is that's going to make your sharpening effect look more organic and realistic. So let me show you what I mean by that. So jumping into Lightroom again, using the same image again, we could, if we wanted to, we could just increase the sharpening here and we can see in the preview, yes, it does sharpen, but what it's doing there is it's sharpening absolutely everything and we don't want to do that. So going down to the masking, what you do is if you hold Alt on your keyboard and then if I go across, we can see this is happening here. And what that's basically doing is you're telling Lightroom what you want to sharpen. All right, so everything that's white will be sharpened. Everything that's black won't be sharpened. So for example, I don't need everything absolutely sharpened. I just need the essentials. The, I just need the really harsh contrasted lines within the photo. The good thing about doing this is you can almost make your lens look even more expensive because it looks like you've used an even sharper, more expensive lens because you're with the masking, you're telling Lightroom exactly what you want to sharpen. If you sharpen the whole image and then you upload it to social media, the compression can make it look obvious that you have used a sharpening tool over the entire image. And obviously that's not real. So you wanna just sharpen just the contrasted edges. So in most images, I tend to be around the 70 mark. And then the amount of sharpening I add tends to roughly be around the 70 mark. 
we can see when we zoom in on the image and then when we increase the sharpen, we can see exactly what it's doing. Now I'm holding down Alt on my keyboard again when I do this and you can see that it's gone black and white. And you're probably wondering why does it go black and white? Well the reason it goes black and white is because we are more accustomed to seeing whether something is sharp or not when it's in black and white. So when you take away the alpha channel, when you take away the color, it's a lot easier for our eyes to see whether something's sharp or not when it's in black and white. So that's why that's there, so it's a really handy tool just to make sure you're definitely happy with how much sharpening you're adding. So that would be my next tip. All right, so the next thing I do with all my images is I just double check that they are not clipping. Now what I mean by that is I wanna make sure that my images are not under or overexposed. So the way you can find that out is if we jump into Lightroom here, if we come up to the top where our histogram is, and if we hover over this guy, we can see that all of a sudden these blue things appear. So if I click that so that the circle, the sorry, the square stays um, on, we can see that you've got these little blue patches. And that is telling you that that is completely underexposed. All detail has been lost, it's just pure black. So if I wanna recover that, if I was to increase the exposure and you can see that they slowly go away, all right? Now there's only a tiny bit left there, but I'm happy with that. I, I'm okay with that tiny little detail there. Um, if I go too high, then obviously I'm gonna, um, his face is gonna look too bright for me. But for overexposed as well, if I click this guy on the other end and I keep going higher and higher, all of a sudden you're gonna see that this red patch appears and that is telling you the opposite end. That's telling you that too much detail is lost and that is just pure white. There's absolutely nothing there at all. So obviously we wanna come back a bit and bring it back. So technically, all the detail is still there, but obviously to our eye, it's still um, overexposed. Obviously I do a lot more of low key stuff, so I'm more paying attention to whether something's underexposed. It's very rare that my images are overexposed. All right, so for my last tip, we're gonna use the spot removal tool. Now, as the name suggests, it's good for removing spots on models' faces, uh, but I wanna use it to remove distracting elements in my image. So if we look at this image again, I wanna get rid of this distracting element in the corner here. And what you can use in Lightroom is the spot removal tool. So holding uh, down on my left mouse button, I can just highlight and select all of the distracting elements, let go of it, let it think about it, and boom, it's done it straight away. If I then hit that to untick it, hit F on my full screen. And we can see it's done it no problem. How easy was that? I don't need to bring this into Photoshop and then bring it back in if I need to make any further adjustments. So you can use the spot removal tool within Lightroom to get rid of all distracting elements. Well, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. These are 10 tips that I do with pretty much every single image in Lightroom when I'm traveling or even when I'm working with a model. If you like this video, then please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe over here if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.